Good evening, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Boy, a lot of you did not like my previous video. <laughs> I expected as much, but you know, um, life is really short. You know that? What is your life? What is your life? It's but a vapor. See, a lot of people go through life thinking they're immortal and that um, death only happens on to the other guy. I've done a video on this before called The Common Denominator. I'm going to link it in this video, if I can remember. Um, today, I just found some very, I found out some um, very sad information. Someone that I used to know, um, his, he was found dead in Chicago. His, um, his body was found in the river. A man who I'd known for over 20 years. I knew him in my lost life, of course, but, um, and uh, he was a little bit younger than I, but you know, Life is way too short, people. You know, the scriptures tell us that we are to redeem the time because the days are evil. It doesn't matter how healthy you think you are. It doesn't matter. When your time is up, your time is up. And those of you who have taken the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. What do you got? You got about four or five years at the most. You've sealed your own fate. Life is short, people. And I, I'm telling, oh, and by the way, let me show you this, just so you can see. <laughs> now, this this was yeah this is bad yes but look at what it says yeah yeah <laughs> I'll make a statement like that <laughs> go right ahead <laughs> you should have seen some of the looks that I was given today <laughs> but anyway yeah, so you know okay life is too short life is very short And the most important thing in your life ought to be, where are you going to go when you die? I know when I, where I'm going to go when I die. I'm going to go to be with the Lord. I know where my wife is going to go when she dies. She's going to go be with the Lord. The only thing that I fear is me leaving her before all this nonsense uh, commences that is coming very soon. Don't want to leave my wife to that. I don't want to leave my wife to the protection of her lost son when it's the Lord has put that upon me. You know? But when you yourself experience, have a rush with death, like I have, it changes you. changes you. It really does. You know, when the Lord saved me over 13 years ago, and um, my life changed, obviously. No, Brad, don't do that. Don't do that. You, you did that. Boom. There you go. You know, it's a process of sanctification. You know. Someone who is saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God can make themselves and their lives a royal mess. That's what Paul is addressing in 1st and 2nd Corinthians, okay? Yes, someone who is saved can have an awful life. Yes, they can. But like I said, when you, when you have an experience with death, 
not afraid of where you're going to go, but what, who is going to be left behind to face what's coming, you know. And I know that the Lord would take good care of my wife. I know that. I know that. I know that. But he has put that responsibility upon me, you know. But there again, life is short. You don't know if you have tomorrow. I don't know if I have tomorrow. Even with all the changes in hell, uh, eating and the supplements and all the stuff uh, I've been taking and whatnot, I don't know. It's up to the Lord. And if you're lost, like I said, the most important thing for you to do is go to the Lord Jesus Christ, broken of your self-righteousness and contrite and you will have fear, fear of going to hell, fear of the Lord. And I'll tell you, that fear, when you have that brokenness of your self-righteousness, when you have that sorrow because it's your fault that he did what he did, and you're guilty, you're going to have that fear of hell. You're going to have that fear of the Lord. And see, it's not a one-step, two-step, three. <laughs> no, it happens in, an, in one fell swoop, if you will. It just happens. It's not a step ladder. Many have tried to explain it to many of you, but see, those of you who dispute these things, you're not saved to begin with. And that's... I know where I'm going to go when I die. What about you? What about you? Turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Got other videos in the works. Um, um, two brethren have... Um, uh, given ideas and uh, and also some notes, so those are coming. Um, some collaborated efforts are coming here in the uh, near future, Lord willing. But um, today is the day for this. Matthew chapter six, verses twenty-four on to verse thirty-four. Now we have to remember something about Matthew chapters five, six, and seven. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? Sermon on the Mount. Faith is mentioned only one time during the Sermon on the Mount, and it's in the form of a rebuke. O ye of little faith. Okay? Faith is only mentioned one time. The Sermon on the Mount from, ver uh, from chapter 5 on to verse uh, chapter 8. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. It's all works. It's all works. Why is that? Because the king will be present. The king will be on the throne when this comes to fruition. Okay? Okay? That, that's why Catholics like the Sermon on the Mount. That's why a lot of heretics like the Sermon on the Mount. Okay? I remember some, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Charity Ministries. He, he said that the Sermon on the Mount was the primary Christian doctrine for us today. <laughs> no, no. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? This is before that. This is for the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on the throne at Jerusalem. The actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven in Jerusalem. This is how it's going to be during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? This is not for us today doctrinally. But a lot of instruction on righteousness. And we need a lot of that, don't we? Don't we? You're supposed to redeem the time because the days are evil. How are you redeeming the time? It 
And you've taken that, that steel of the Jesuit Punyard? You've got very little time left. Please use it wisely. Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 on to verse 34, the close of the chapter. We're going to make some stops along the way. Okay? Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along. I expect you to. And I'm going to speak to you as if you are, okay? I'm keeping my voice down because my wife's asleep. So it's what? It's uh, 7.47 p.m. my time. This has to be done now. So Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 and verse 34, beginning at verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, mammon, money, okay? God, other, holy, mammon, earthly, worldly, okay? Solomon tried to sit at both tables. Didn't, didn't fare too well. You can't be divided. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We're going to look at that, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now you sit there with your, your that big smile of yours, laughing. It's like how wrong everybody is except you, but yet you can't you can't go through the scriptures to at least offer counter arguments at the very least just sit there with that smug smile what if you were what if what if today was a what if today was your day what if tomorrow's your day any of you really confident in that belief of yours but yet you live like a devil no change dispute about things that come naturally after salvation naturally meaning from the Lord it's a process that comes it's just going to happen it's the nature of salvation okay first Corinthians chapter 10 verses 19 on to verse 23 What shall I then, what say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table <laughs> and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Look at verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You know, the Lord says in the book of Revelation, because you are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, therefore will I spew thee out of my mouth, you know, vomit, okay? It's either or, lukewarm, there's no option C, there's no gray area, you're either hot or cold, you're either going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve the devil, 
You can't have it both ways, people. It's either or. No matter what these people want to tell you, okay? It's either or. There's no middle ground. There's no option C. <laughs> There's no purgatory, okay? There's no third option. It's very simple, okay? It's black, it's white. You can't have it both ways. You're either going to love the one and hate or hate the other. And so many say that they love the Lord, but they actually hate Him. Because they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny Him. And look at verse 19. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Colossians chapter 3. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. And how, how, what a coincidence. I covered this in the previous video. Mortify, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. All those things, okay, Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. They're all idolatries. They're all forms of idolatry. And then go back to 1 Corinthians 10, verse 19. What say I then? That the idol is anything? Or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Now here in context he is talking about the little stupid Buddha statue. Or the uh, statue of the Catholic Mary. Whatever. Whatever. They didn't have the Catholic Mary back then. I know. But... You know what I'm saying, okay? Uh, but there again, when it comes to idolatry, what idol idol are you truly serving? Okay, you might be bowing to uh, a Catholic Mary statue. But what idol are you truly serving? Again, I submit unto you that it's the one that you're looking at in the mirror there, Jack. Or Jacqueline, whatever you be. Self-gratification. Self-gratification through fornication, uncleanness, through all of those things is the ultimate form of idolatry. And the idolatry that is being displayed is for yourself. Just like you're an atheist, say you don't believe in a God, you're a liar. Yes, you do. The one you look at in the mirror. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm going to hit James a few times in this video. James chapter 1. Hmm. Verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't drink uh, the cup of the Lord's table and the cup of devils. You can't have both. 
there are those who try to have both. And look at them. Oh, some of them who call themselves Christians, they're doing very well. Aren't you? <laughs> and make statements you need to have your compass reconfigured. Thou fool. You have about four to five years left. If, if we're lucky. Call yourself a saved man. You can't have it both ways, people. Because look at this. Now go to 1 Kings chapter 11. Aha. 1 Kings chapter 11. Let's get some really good instruction of righteousness here about what happened to someone who tried to play both sides. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 8. 1 Kings 11, verses 1 on to verse 8. Hmm. King Solomon. He had it all. Everything. He had everything at his back. Today's the fifth. Have you read Ecclesiastes five, uh, 5 today, by the way? Vanity of vanity, said the preacher. But King Solomon loved many strange women. The strange women is not that they were like strangers, like Ugh, looking all weird. No, not of Israel not of Israel. Okay? Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, not of Shem, women of the Moabites, relative Moabites, remember, came from the union of, um, what's his name? Oh, um, Lot. Uh, Moabites and the Ammonites came from the union between Lot and his daughters. Okay, so a relation there. But together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Okay, you got the Moabites and Ammonites and Edomites. You have Lot and Esau. Okay, the Zidonians and Hittites. Okay, not of Shem, okay? Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. Why? For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. You know, you read Proverbs chapter 7, which clearly is a great description of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, uh, Roman Catholicism, okay? Um, there are some men out there who love all kinds of women and will be brought to a piece of bread as if they're a dog with the woman dangling that piece of bread. Here, boy. Here, boy. I've seen it. Granted, men will do that to women, too. But the admonition here is on to King Solomon. I had it all. Here, he, I bet you he thought he could play both sides of this. Let's continue. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, a thousand women, at his disposal. The ultimate player, if you will. <laughs> I know, poor choice of, choice of terminology. I know, pick apart, but he had a thousand women at his disposal. Husbands? We do sometimes find it challenging to deal with our wives 
Not to mention how challenging it is for them to deal with us, right? Right, sisters? Amen. Amen. But um, can you imagine a thousand? And his wives turned away his heart. Why? Because his heart was divided. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, old, See, in Paul's old age, he said, I have kept, I have, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Okay? He, has, he had kept the faith. He got stronger in old age. Solomon, he done got twisted. I see a lot of that happening with people who call themselves Christians, but you know, we are in the falling away, obviously. Those who say that they are of us but never were of us are the ones who are falling away. But, it specifically is here. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, when he should have known better, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Eshtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians. Another form of the modern Roman Catholic Mary, uh, you know, uh, Diana of the Ephesians, Queen of Heaven, also known as Semiramis, the wife of Nimrod, okay? And after Milcom, the abominations of the Ammonites, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord as did, as did David his father. Then Solomon built an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Moab and Ammon, remember, those are the descendants of Lot. Okay? Who came from out of where? Sodom. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. His heart was turned away. And what he he knew full well. But see, his heart was divided. Why? But King Solomon loved many strange women. Many strange women from other nations. That was his crux, his Achilles heel, if you will. Turned away his heart and messed, messed him up. He wanted it all. He could have it all. But his heart was divided because he loved many strange women. He loved flesh. Hence, it's either or, but he tried to he tried to locate that option C. Look what happened to him. Look what happened to him. You could argue, well, David did the same thing, but look at the repentance of David. Look at the sorrow that he went th uh, through. And the hum humbling and humility a difference. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Oh, wait. Remember now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 6 and let's look at verse 24 again, okay? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Now, Go to Luke 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. In the meantime, 
when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Pharisees. Pharisees are uh, the modern equivalent to a Pharisee today is a Catholic. Someone who takes the traditions of men and places them far above the scriptures. They love mammon. They love the praises of men. They love the things of this world. They want both sides. They want to have their cake and eat it too. Okay? For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verses 14 on to verse 21. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? Having ears, hear ye not, and do ye, and do not ye, and do ye not remember when I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many basketful of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, how is it that ye do not understand? Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verses 11 and 12. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? That ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. See, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay? Ye cannot love the things of the world and expect to have the things of God. Ye cannot eat at the devil's table and eat at the Lord's table. It's either or. Okay? It's either or. We need bread to survive, yes. But what he is saying there, the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, they loved mammon. They served mammon. And his example with bread there. Beware of their doctrines. Okay? You cannot serve God and mammon like the Pharisees, like the Catholics do. Mammon, an idol. What is the purpose of that idolatry? Self-gratification. Hence, yourself. Now, go back to Matthew chapter 6. Let's read verses 25 on to verse 26. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Now some will come to Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 on to verse 26. 
uh, basically from 24 until the close of the chapter, but we're going to break this in pieces. And they will use this saying that we don't have to do anything, uh, work for the Lord, or do anything to provide for our own, okay? Okay? Um, and they will come to this. There was a reason why our Lord was saying this, okay? Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. You have to remember, the Sermon on the Mount is describing how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The Sermon on the Mount was given before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who was he speaking on to? He was speaking on to Jews. Okay? So, Luke chapter 22, if, my if I would get there. <laughs> okay, verses 35 on to verse 38. Okay? Luke 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise, his script, script, his script, not the secret instructions of the Jesuits, you devils, no, but your, his script, the scriptures, okay? And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Why is that? For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Now go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 on to verse 15. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But we just looked at Luke. Hold on. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Now for instruction and in righteousness for today, yes, instruction and in righteousness. Doctrinally, <laughs> hold up, let's, let's finish this, okay? And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. And that for instruction and in righteousness for us today, people aren't going to listen to you. Okay? Give them some information, back away. Okay? Because, as uh, several of you have noticed uh, in the previous video, there are people who will ask rhetorical questions. They will ask a question whose answer they don't want to know, but they will ask a question just to start strife and debate. And my beloved brethren, my beloved brethren, you saw that. That's what these people who like to waste your time do. Yes. 
A rhetorical question. They will ask a question whose answer they don't want to know. They will ask it just to start strife and debate and get, keep you going on and on and on and use trickery and look for gotcha moments as if they were children on a playground. That's the mentality that they use. Children on a playground. You know, why aren't you answering? Because you can't. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Children of the devil. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> Verse 14, for our instruction in righteousness, very good for us. Verse 15, verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for that land, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed like that. Quickly. But for those who reject, not so might be saying, well, what's the point? Now, we'll go back to Matthew chapter 6. Let's read verses 25 and 26 again. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Why would Jesus say that? Okay, hold your place. Hold your place. And let's go back to Luke 22. Okay? Luke 22. Why did he say this? Okay? Was, not, was he not right there present with them? Luke 22, Luke 22, verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Remember the fishes with the five thousand, uh, the fishes and the bread, fed five thousand and three thousand. You know, these things that were miraculously happening. He when when the disciples were feeding the thousands. Okay, it was miraculously appearing and feeding all these people. Okay, with the bread and the fishes. Okay, okay, it was miraculous because the king was there. Because he was present? The king, our Lord Jesus Christ, was on the earth offering the kingdom of heaven unto his people, the Jews? You get it, right? Behold the fowls of the air. They, For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them are ye not much better than they? Jesus Christ as King before the death, burial, and resurrection, he was there to do what? Offer the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. And of course, ultimately, to make the perfect sacrifice for sins by shedding his blood on the cross, dying being buried and raising again from the dead the third day, okay, according to the scriptures. But he was there to offer the kingdom of heaven and to be the lamb. For God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, okay? Not out of a Bible, but out of the scriptures, okay? So, he was saying that in verse 25, why? And 26, why? Because, remember the miracles of the loaves. Even if you want to put into the equation the miracle of the water unto wine. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ as King, was there. He would supernaturally, he would provide for his people as king, son of David, taking care of his people. The miracle of the loaves, you know, miraculously, just appearing in their hand as they were feeding the people. Okay, if you want to put the, um, the water and wine in the equation, go ahead. Healing the sick, 
raising the dead? Because he, God the Father, our King, the King of the Jews, our King, okay? Okay? He was there, present. He would supernaturally, miraculously care for his own. That's why he was saying that. They didn't have to worry about that. Why? Because their king would take care of them, provide for them. But, see, that's why it's imperative to remember in Luke chapter 22, okay? That's why, that it's, see, what, what happened? A dispensational difference, okay? Dispensational difference, okay? That, he said, before the death, burial, and resurrection. And here in Luke 22, when he says in verse 37, uh, verse um, 36 on to verse 37, Then said he unto them, But now. Why the but now? Because he was about to go to the cross to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? The kingdom of heaven was put off. Okay? He was going to the cross to pay for sins, to make a perfect sacrifice and atonement for sins with his blood. Okay? And dying and burying and being rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? He was on his way to the cross. But here, on the Sermon on the Mount, before the death, burial, and resurrection, are you getting this? I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Okay? Dispensational thing. He was going to the uh, cross. That's why he says, But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that, this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, Isaiah chapter 53, for the things concerning me end and what was that end the cross God will provide for us today in this dispensation the time of the Gentiles absolutely absolutely through one another yes but while the king was there he would be doing it supernaturally for his own he was there present see he was going to die Buried and raised again the third day according to the scripture. The king is not on the earth right now, people. Okay? See, that's, that's why Catholics love the Sermon on the Mount. Because unto the Catholic, who is their king? Sosa. You might be saying Francis. Um, Pope Francis is a Jesuit. That means that Pope Francis, as a Jesuit, is subservient onto Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order, the true powerhouse in Catholicism, okay? The most dangerous and deadliest man on the earth, Arturo Sosa, okay? Remember that. Remember that, okay? Francis, he's a Jesuit, okay? He's a Jesuit pope. As a Jesuit, he's subservient unto the superior general people. Okay? He's a puppet. It's Sosa. Okay? Don't forget that. But that is why the Catholics love the Sermon on the Mount. Because it's all works. And on to the Catholic, their king is the Pope. They think it's uh, Francis, but it's actually Sosa. Who will eventually be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? But that's why Jesus in verses 25 and verse 26 said that. Because he as king is going to be there. Providing for them supernaturally. He will provide for us today, but he's not here physically. We are here. He lives in us. But he himself is not here physically until he come back at his second coming. Okay? That's why that's why he said what he said in verses 25 and 26. But we're, we're not done by a long shot. Let's read verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit onto a stature? Cubit. 
from the elbow from here to right there. That's a cubit, okay? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit onto a stature? Okay? And isn't it amazing that there are heresies out there that says that if you think it, you can achieve it. If you think it, it comes to pass. Name it and claim it. So there are religions out there that say, um, by taking thought, you can add one cubit to your stature. You can make things come to life by thinking it. There are religions out there. The metaphysical mind sciences, these prosperity preachers, okay? The secret, the law of attraction, okay? Evil devils like Tony Robbins who use neuro-linguistic programming, which was created by the Jesuits, okay? I got a video on that. You can go find that if you want, okay? These people teach that, yes, you can by taking thought, add one cubit onto your stature. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit onto his stature? Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Come on, fingers work with me. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13, to the close of the chapter. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded, perfect in heart, okay? I know I covered this in the previous video. We're going over it again. Deal with it, okay? And perfect doesn't mean sinlessly perfect, okay? All right. Sinless perfection is impossible, okay? You cannot be sinlessly perfect. I have a video speaking about debunking sinless perfection. Watch it if you have questions. I don't have time for you, wicked. Not you. Hey, hey. And this, very quickly, to you easy believism devils, this one thing I have to give you. Not even you guys try to preach sinless perfection. Okay, you don't. You don't. You, you are the opposite. You want to make people comfortable in their sin. But see, even you guys, you don't preach sinless perfection. Okay? <laughs> You guys know there is no such thing as sinless perfection. And you're devils, okay? I'll give you that, okay? But you, when you got somebody, you know, oh, you didn't look at the verses of Scripture. It's, dude, sh you looking at me? Shut up, okay? Sinless perfection is not possible on this earth while we are here right now, okay? That's impossible. You say you're sinless, you're a liar. You've sinned. Get over yourself, okay? Repent of your wickedness. Okay? There is no such thing as sinless perfection. You cannot be like Christ, meaning sinless. Get over yourself. Okay? Sorry, brethren, I had to... Like I said, not even you easy believism devils preach sinless perfection. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, so... And what's funny is the uh, easy believism devils would agree with me that, yeah, those guys who preach um, e uh, sinless perfection, yeah, they're crazy. And they are. So, beg your pardon. Let's continue. Verse 15. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect. Remember we looked about how Solomon's heart wasn't perfect with the Lord as David his father was. David's heart was broken, contrite, had fear. Okay? A broken and contrite heart and a heart that fears the Lord is a heart that is perfect toward the Lord. Okay? Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal the, even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, 
and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is, dis whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. But see, verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this thing, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, Forgetting those things which are behind. Taking thought. Worrying. Being concerned. Overly concerned about things that are back there. You have to press forward. You have to move on. You can't stay back here. That's what the devils want you to do. They want you to stay here and not grow. They want to stunt your growth. See? They want you to be consumed with them. They want them. They want you to be consumed with their attacks. They want to consume your mind with their little diversions. See, that's what they want. They don't want you to grow, go forward. They don't want you to grow. Who, by taking thought, can have one cubit to a stature? You can't be concerned with what's back here. You can't fix it move forward. Okay? And of course, Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. I, this, this is very meat, I think. Proverbs chapter 29. Just one verse. Just one verse. Verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. See, if you uh, you give yourself over to oh, uh, over to too much concern about things that cannot be fixed. If you've done something, to someone make it right. If there's something that you can make right, make right. But if you can't. And it's behind you, move forward. And trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take ye... Now we are going to read verses 28 on to verse 32. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, remember, all flesh is as grass, it's here today, then gone tomorrow, Isaiah chapter 40 again, okay? Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? You check the entirety of the Sermon on the Mount. That's the only time faith is mentioned. And look at how it's mentioned in the form of a rebuke. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? And why was he saying that? Because again, as king, he was offering unto them the kingdom of heaven. He would be there to provide for them as king. But as we saw in Luke, okay, as we saw in Luke, he says, but now take your provisions. Because why? The things concerning him have an end. He was going to the cross to die, he shed his blood, to be buried and rose again the third day. And then eventually, psh, go up into heaven. Okay? Hence, the king is not here on the earth right now, present. 
But go to Second Thessalonians chapter 3. See, the difference in the dispensation is that the king was on the earth offering the kingdom of heaven unto them, and he would miraculously provide for his own while as king on the earth. He provides for his own today through the body of Christ. Okay? He will provide for you today, brethren. You have to remember that. Okay? But, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 6, on to verse 13. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Verse 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. What is this power he's talking about? We'll get to that in a second. Let's continue though. Okay? For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. And there are so many out there, for example, who will t attack like Brother Brian and even myself. It's like, well, you guys don't have secular jobs. You're lazy. So shut up. Okay? Working for the Lord is doing work. Okay? And I remember there's this fine old chap in uh, England, not my dear friend from England, but another one who, um, who talked about, you know, um, working for the Lord and receiving wages of the Lord through the body of Christ. Uh, I'll never forget it. He says, he said, I wish it were the, the case, but it's not. It's just not there. For those of you who, know, who may know, I believe that individual is the head, one, of, one of the head Jesuit provincials of YouTube. I really do. Can I prove that to you? Absolutely not. But I, uh, I am... I have no doubt that that man is a Jesuit provincial. Y'all know who I'm talking about. And even him himself knows that I think that. Hi. But n n never mind. Let's continue. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now then, now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Now, Paul worked like that because, number one, he didn't have a wife or a son or anything like that, but he did that to show these people an example of what to do, to not just sit there, but to be active, okay? To do something, okay? All right? But look at verse 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto follow, unto you to follow us. Okay? What is this power that he's talking about? Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 1 unto verse 13. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? There are those out there who's like uh, working for the Lord and working with your hands or doing secular stuff. Uh, working for the Lord is not real work. You are out of your mind. That's because a lot of you don't. There are those, I, I know for, for certain, 
There are so many of you out there who do work for the Lord, but that is not your main calling, okay? There are some out there that he, the Lord, will call to positions such as this, to speak and to teach his word, okay? And, you know, we really need them. We need people like that now, okay, to do so, okay? But there again, there are so many of you of the Church of the Living God who our Lord is using in whatever capacity you are doing work for the Lord, okay? All right? But are all teachers, are all preachers, are all apostles, are and so on and so forth? No. He has different people in the body as it pleases him. Okay? Okay? To do work for the Lord and to receive wages of the Lord through his body, the church of the living God, is still work. It's still labor, dear friend. Okay? I know you don't like to hear that. Deal with the scriptures. Deal with the scriptures. Okay? But remember, Paul said, not that we have not power. Let's continue. Verse 2. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Now, Note this. Pay attention to the word power here in these two verses. Okay? Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of our of the Lord and Kephas, Peter? Or or I only and Barnabas, okay? Have we not power to forbear working? working secular. Paul didn't. Why? To give an example unto those uh, to, unto those people. He was the apostle unto the Gentiles. Apostle, the um, building off of the foundation of Christ. Remember? This was the first century, okay? After his death, burial, and resurrection, and his ascension into heaven, okay? He was setting an example. He was laying the groundwork Okay, the foundation was laid, which is Christ. He was building off of it. Okay, but it says right there, verse 6 Or I only and Barnabas have not we power to forbear working? Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or say not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen, or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things this is Paul talking people you can't get away away from this okay you can't if he's called you to the calling to preach or to teach what do you do with this not everybody is called to this obviously not no but there are some who are and they have, there is nothing wrong. Deal with the scriptures. There is nothing wrong with that. With them living of the gospel. Not off. Of the gospel. Of it. By example. By faith. Through trial, through tribulation. Through patience, Ooh. through fear, through persecution. Okay? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power. 
but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And what is our temple today? The body. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? And look at this about um, verse 7. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? His own charges? Not I. I've said this to you before. You're looking at me. Okay? It's you and I speaking together. Okay? This is not a one-man show. I am not doing this by myself. Okay? Thank you, part. I'm not doing this by myself. There are those who pray for us. And we covet your prayers. There are those who help us. And praise the Lord for it. Okay? There are those we get to meet with in fellowship. There are those who give ideas. There are those who give verses. There are those who uh, lead, uh, you know, say, Hey, Brad, do that. It's, this is not... A one-man show. I am not doing this by myself. I am not going at, uh, at warfare at my own charges. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing this by myself. You, the Church of the Living God. We. Okay? We. You see me. But I ain't doing this by myself. The prayers of the saints, the fellowship of the saints, the charity, the love, the mercy, it is of our Father who is in heaven who provides through the church of the living God. This ain't a one man show. No way. I, we, would not be here if it wasn't for our Lord Jesus Christ through you, Church of the Living God. And we praise the Lord Jesus Christ for every single one of you, for every single one of you who pray for us, who help us, who fellowship with us. We're your servants. Not the other way around. Now go to Second Timothy, chapter uh, chapter four. Second Timothy, chapter four, verse five. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And go to Acts chapter 6 now. Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 4. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And remember... Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 5? Come on. 
Come on. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verses 18 on to verse 20. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the word, uh, world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Okay? Remember, not everyone is called to the same calling. Okay? Unfortunately. But God has his purpose for those of you of his body. Okay? And wherever he has placed you, rejoice in that and go with it. Okay? And serve him as he would have you serve in the capacity that he has ha that he has you in. But see, the difference is one, the king is there literally, our Lord Jesus Christ. Go back to Matthew now, okay? Go back to Matthew chapter twenty uh, Matthew six, okay? Matthew chapter six. The difference is the king was there present. And would supernaturally provide for his own. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He provided with what? Twelve fishes and a couple of loaves of bread or something like that. Uh, fed thousands miraculously. The water to wine even. Okay? The king present will supernaturally provide for his people. Okay? In this dispensation. After the death, burial, and resurrection. He's up. He ascends up into heaven. He provides for us through his body. Through working. Whether it is as a minister, a preacher, okay? Whether it's flipping burgers or hot dogs, whatever. Whatever capacity the Lord has called you in, serve him in that capacity. Okay? simple. It's quite simple. Okay? Now, Matthew chapter 6. Let's pick up at verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verses 25. Oh, on to verse 40. Now, Remember, as king, he would provide as king. Okay? Remember that. And then when he goes up into heaven, after the death, burial, and resurrection, he provides for us through his body, the church of the living God, through one another, in whatever capacity it is that he has called you into. Okay? But, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when come and camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily. Now pay attention. Remember what we looked at uh, about the Pharisees who were covetous, who wanted, who loved mammon? Okay? They served mammon, not God. Okay? Remember that? Remember that we looked at that? You were probably thinking, that seemed a little off place. Right? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Meaning their God was their belly. They only saw with the natural eye. 
they didn't see the mirror. They, what does he say? You seek me not because you saw the miracles, miracles of loaves, but they only saw that they were eating, not the fact that they were being miraculously fed by their king. Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. And how many people who claim to be Christians will go to the Lord and the Lord actually does something for them and uh, helps them on whatever it is, and then that's all they go to the Lord for, as if he were an errand boy. They go to the Lord just for what he can do for you here. How many do you know who are Christians who are like that? They love the blessing rather more so than the blessor. See. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him, not in him, say, believe on him whom he hath sent. On him. In and on, there's a difference. The devils also believe and tremble. Lots of people say they believe in Jesus. Yeah, I believe that Jesus was a real person. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I believe in him, and I'm just going to have that, and I'm saved. No. See, believing on him means that you're putting something on him. You're trusting on him. Okay? It's a trust. Believing on. You're trusting on him. You're putting everything on him. See? Everything. My, my hope, my love, lies on nothing less than Jesus and his righteousness. My hope and trust and faith are on the Lord Jesus Christ for what he did for me because of what I did to him. Okay? Trusting on Him. I trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you believe in Him? And that's it. But do you believe on Him? There's a difference there, dear friend. There's a big difference. So many just believe in Him. How many of you actually believe on Him? You shall know them by the fruits. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? <laughs> look, now look at verse 30. Look at verse 30 for a moment, okay? And look at verse 26. Verily, verily, I say, uh, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles. They saw the miracles. Okay? They saw the miracles. But because ye did eat the loaves and were filled. See, they saw the miracles, but in seeing the miracles, they only saw the result of the miracles, not the one who was doing the miracles to give them what they needed. Oh, and how, oh, that, that right there, brethren. That right there. Would you love the Lord if he cut you off, Brad? Yes, I would. Praise the Lord. I, I, I don't think I'm giving, don't want to give him any reason to, obviously, but um, would you love the Lord if he took his blessings away from you like he did unto Job? See, the comparison with that is Job. Satan is like, hey, look at how you protected Job. Let me, let you know, let me, you know, take away his, your protection from him. 
Take everything he has and he will curse you to your face. How many of these Christians, how many of these Christians, when the economy collapses, when the grocery stores no longer have food or have these rolling food shortages, okay? Come back in a couple days, maybe we'll have something for you. How many are going to be still claiming to be Christian? How many are really going to stick by the Lord in those kinds of troubles? Hmm? How many? How many of you who are millionaires and are the first ones to tell people who willingly isolated yourself for 14 days and willingly took the steel of the Jesuit poignard, Christian. How faithful are you going to be when your millions dwindle away and take, are now taken from you from the Jesuit order? Hmm? Whose compass needs to be reconfigured? Verse 30 again. They said therefore unto him, What sign shewest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What doest, what dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now remember, these people could only see the bread physical bread very much like the Catholics and if you were to continue reading Jesus totally debunks your stupid ridiculous little pukerist there Catholic okay he's he's talking he's not talking literally okay he's talking symbolically but we'll get on that uh, check out the Catholic uh, playlist on the channel it, it debunks it all okay but anyway okay these people can only see the blessing rather than the blessor. They, they, they saw the miracle happen, but they, can only, they could only see the result of the miracle, not the miracle itself. Okay? Okay? So, verse 34. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Now remember, they couldn't see. They saw the miracle, okay, but they were more interested in the result rather than the one who was doing it, who was their king, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, their promised Messiah, their king, and our God, okay? And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say, but I said unto you, that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him, we don't see him. They, they were looking at him. We don't see him. They, they were looking at him. 
may have etern everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Okay? Look at verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon him. Call upon the name of the Lord. And ask him for his mercy and forgiveness, and he save you. You are eternally secure. Okay? It happens in a fluid motion. You are broken out of yourself. You take to your knees. The horror, the sorrow, it's overwhelming. I'm going to hell because of what I did to you. I'm, I, I don't deserve it. I, I don't deserve your goodness. I deserve to go to hell. I don't deserve any mercy. Please, Lord, I, 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 what I did to you. Please, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. Please forgive me. Lord Jesus Christ, please save me. And those of you who can't understand that is simple because you've never been through that. And you ask questions just to cause strife. Verse 40, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, they saw him, and believeth on him, believeth on him, trusting on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day and last day and of course you need to remember what this is before the death burial and resurrection but he's talking about eternal security because the eternal security at this very moment was not yet there because he had not died and bur died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. He hadn't bled on the cross to make an atonement for sin yet. But he was telling them what was coming. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verses 30 on to verse 47. And he spake these words... As he spake these words, many believed on him. He spake many words. You read uh, John chapter 8 up to verse 30. Sounded really good. And many believed on him. What does it say? Many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If. You know, when you see an if in Scripture, take your pen, circle it. Okay? They answer him, We be Abraham's seed. Physical descendant from Abraham. Shem, you know. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They were, they were the servants of sin. They loved mammon. They served mammon. You will either love the one or hate the other. They loved mammon. They loved money. And the things that were attributed to money. Praises of men. For the love of money is the root of all evil. For which, while some coveted after, they have erred through the faith, from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Let's continue. Okay. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, the physical descendant seed, physical. But these guys, who is he, who is he, these people believed on him, sure did. So they said, 
they profess that they know God, but in works that they deny Him? Mm. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. That word that hath no place in you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stay away from that. Don't eat that. Don't look at that. Turn that off. Get away from that person. Okay? No, I want to do what I'm going to do. I just believe. I'm going to heaven no matter what. So I'm just going to... You know, I'm, thank you there, Lord. Forgive me this. Thank you for that food I just ate. We praise the Lord. Woohoo! I'm just going to go live like the world. Enjoy the movies and uh, video games and whatnot. And so... I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Time's too short, brethren. People, time's too short. When the church of the living God is redeemed, caught up, too late for you. You're going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. And the salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble is faith and works. But no, you want to believe that it's just, you're going to go into that believing that it's just believe because of what these devils are telling you. And you're too proud to humble yourselves. You want your cake and eat it too. You want the best of both worlds. You want to eat at the table of the Lord, but you also want to eat at the table of the devil, don't you? It's either or, dear friend. It's either or. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yeah. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, okay? Now, note, note, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Note in verse 37, he says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed. But here he says, Abraham's children. Well, seed produces a child. Yes, yes it does. Yes it does. Yes it does. But see, the seed he's referring to there is actual physical descendant. But if the children of Abraham, verse 40, But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not, Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Hmm. Then said they to him, we be born, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. These are the ones who believed on Him, remember. Okay? These are the ones who believed on Him. Uh, do you, do you uh, for those of you <coughs> of the Church of the Living God, do you recognize any of this that you may encounter with personal attacks from those who just believe. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. Believed on him, yeah. But did they really? Did they really? Did they, in believing on him, did they have trust on him? Did they put everything upon him? Verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, he would love me, because Jesus is the Father. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. <laughs> ye are of your father the devil. <laughs> And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, 
and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And of course, if you were to continue to read, the same ones who believed on him went to stone him, to kill him. The same ones. Isn't that fascinating? Back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek him first. In the beginning, God. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Now, we have already established by what we've been looking at. Uh, those who seek the Lord just for what they can gain an advantage of in this world. Okay? Like I said, they see the result of the miracle, the blessing, but they don't take note of the miracle itself or the, the blessor. Okay? Many people want to believe in Jesus just so they can make their carnal life better. And if you look in scripture, that's not how it always is going to be. That's what those metaphysical mind science care Catholic Pentecatholics are preaching to people. God wants to bless you, bless you, your best life now, that kind of thing. Okay? It's not how it works. Okay? Remember. Remember uh, Hebrews chapter 11, which is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble? Yes. But, remember that. Remember Paul went through a lot of stuff. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, had nowhere to lay his head. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, God manifest in the flesh, was homeless down here. Yeah. Luke chapter 7, verses 18 on to verse 23. And the disciples of John shewed him of all these things, and John calling unto him, and John calling unto him, two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Now that's kind of striking, isn't it? That uh, John would say that when he himself's like, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh uh, the sin, taketh away the sin of the world. Well, John was, number one, in prison, going to be beheaded. So, naturally, you could think, eh, he might have had a few moments of, oh, boy, I really, <laughs> you are, right? You are, right? You are, yeah? Oh, oh, good, thank you. Because when the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour, I, I, you know, verse 21 and going on to verse 23, I, I, can, I can see it's like our Lord, our, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ. It, I, oh, oh, you, you want to see? Okay, come here. Come here. Let me show you. Let me show you. Okay. Boom, boom. Okay. <laughs> I can just picture our Lord. It's like, oy vey. Okay. You, you want to see? You want you you I'm going to show you. You go confirm 
my uh, my disciple John. Okay, I know he's a little freaked out right now, but here, yeah, let me let me show you. Okay, then Jesus. Okay, in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way, and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. There are those of you who will say, Well, how could any, no one's going to be offended in Jesus. Really? Look at the world out there right now. Um, that looks to me like a lot of people are offended in Jesus right now, don't you? Huh? Yeah. What about those who call themselves Christians and that are not of the church of the living God? And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Does it offend you that the Lord tells you, hey, hey, don't listen to that type of music? That offends you, doesn't it? Hey, 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 don't watch Hollywood movies. Don't watch Hollywood movies. That offends you, doesn't it? Don't eat that fast food. Stay away from that processed stuff. It's going to bite you in the buttocks later on. That offends you, doesn't it? Because you like all that stuff. Don't, don't be going out there fornicating. You're not married. Don't go out there fornicating. You, you belong to me now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh. But that offends you, doesn't it? Yeah. God comes into those of you who are saved, born again, converted, and tells you how to live according to the scriptures. It, in other words, the changed life, which a lot of you don't like. Why? Because God's true standard for us today offends you. Are you ashamed when you commit abomination? You can't even, you're not ashamed. You can't even blush. You flaunt your stuff. Like they did in Sodom. See, you're, you want both sides. You want that gray area. You want that option C. You want to eat at the table of the Lord and the table of the devil. You want your cake and eat it too. Don't you? Don't you? You sure do. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 2. On to verse 4. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And the Lord is that spirit, by the way. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Why did we look at that? What did they do? They prayed and fasted. They sought the Lord first. They sought the Lord first. Prayed and fasted until he gave them a response. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And he sent them off being sent by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they sought him first. 
with prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. We as the Church of the Living God today ought to do that more often. Acts chapter 16. Verses 6 on to verse 12. Now when they had gone through Pithyria and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysa, Mysa, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysa, came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia, and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. Well, why did we look at that? They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to go and preach the word in Asia, but they were called to go on to somewhere else. Do you think these guys were just blindly walking around without any direction? Or do you think that they were seeking the Lord first? Remember, during these times, prayer and fasting was a regular thing, unlike today, where it's an irregular thing. They sought the Lord first, and He guided them. Heavily, mightily, He guided them, because they put God First. You see a lot of people trivialize, trivialize that. You know, there's this, I was sent this about that uh, Denzel Washington guy who did this motivational thing about put God first. And you, you, you know the thing about Denzel Washington? <laughs> He's a Jesuit trained. A Jesuit actor. <laughs> Gotta like that. Putting God first. Putting God first. Through prayer and fasting. Seeking him in all things. Okay? Joel, chapter 2. We're going to the Old Testament now. Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Now you look at those verses. You look at those verses. Verse 16, uh, verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Hey, everybody, Church of the Living God. Hey, hello. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Prayer and fasting. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and let the bride and the bride out of her closet. For here in America, you think this kind of thing is possible? It's impossible for us today here in America. But we have the church of the living God. You want power? 
You want power in your life from our Lord Jesus Christ? Are you putting are you putting him first? Or is he somewhere third, fourth, fifth, or something like that? Are you truly putting the Lord first? Above your own self? Above your eating? Prayer and fasting? I know that there are those of you of the Church of the Living God that do. I know of a beloved brother up in Canada that does that quite often. And also here in America. Yes. And also, of course, in Europe. Seems more likely that people outside of America are more ready to do that than we Americans for some reason. <laughs> Look at it. You know your answer. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Who does that today? Who does that today? Of the church of the living God. Strip everything away and focus everything on our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, like, I, like I've told you, in the book of Genesis, very first verse, in the beginning God. Roll out of your bed and hit the floor and start praying. If you got good, if, you know, take care of morning duties, and, you know, go ahead. But whatever. Soon, get out of that bed and start praying. Give your day, give your life at the start to God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Above your own self. But see, that takes a humility. It takes a brokenness. And not a self-serving attitude. Isaiah, chapter 55. As you've noticed, we're going backwards. Isaiah, Chapter 55. Come on, fingers, work with me. Isaiah 55, verses 6. On to the close of the chapter. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the... Let the wicked forsake his ways, <clears throat> and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Forsaking things in order to turn your attention onto the Lord. What a concept! For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now think about that verse very quickly. This is a double-edged sword, the word of the Lord, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? It's a two-edged sword. He says that, what does he say? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Okay? But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. The scriptures are either going to condemn you, or comfort you, rebuke you, or chasten you, edify you. Which, what are they going to do? 
His word is going to serve his purpose in you, whether it's for edification, for instruction, for correction, for reproof. Oh, oh we'll, we'll go there. We'll go there. Don't worry. We'll go there. Hmm? His word is going to fulfill his purpose that he sent it for. Either to break you to your knees, to break you, to bring you to contrition and fear of the Lord, that in that fear you will cry out and call upon the name of the Lord for his mercy and salvation, and that he may save you. Or that it offends you. And you don't like it. You don't like his hard standard. So you're going to skip all over them and call yourself a Christian. Either way, it's not returning to him void. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And of course, go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy, verse. 16 and 17. Uh, let's, okay, verse uh, 11 in Isaiah 55. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Verse 16 and 17 in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse uh, chapter, uh, 2 Timothy 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Beg your pardon. Verses 16 on to verse 17. This is past my bedtime, by the way. <laughs> All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thank you brother, unto all good works. Go to Amos. Amos chapter 4. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. In all things, seek Him first. Okay? Amos chapter 4. Let's refresh our memories in Matthew chapter 6. Verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, not your own by you just believing. And all these things shall be added unto you, because it all comes from the hands of the Lord. Amos chapter 4, verses 6, Unto verse 6 unto the close of the chapter. Pay attention to this. What happens if you don't seek the Lord first? And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Different dispensation. Speaking unto the Jews, instruction in righteousness. Okay? And isn't it funny and interesting that an actual famine is coming to America soon? And also, I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, 
and the peace whereupon it reigned not withered. <coughs> so two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Now he was talking directly unto his chosen people, the Jews, trying to get their attention because they wandered away. He smote, he smote them so they would turn unto him. How many of you turn on to the one who smites you? You're of the church of the living God. You're in sin right now. Things are happening. Are you turning on to the Lord? Uh, practical. America. Look at what's happening. Is, that, is America as a nation turning on to the Lord in repentance? Hardly. It's never going to happen. Let's continue. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword. Get a load of this one. And have taken away your horses. And I have made the stink of your camps to come up onto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah in an instant, quickly. And ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore will I do unto therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Gonna die. Prepare to meet thy God. He 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 sent all this stuff onto them, and they didn't return on him. And he says, "Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel." Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and createth the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness, and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. See, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, judgment. You might get away with some things now, but when you die, Let's finish this up. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. And here's the point. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Proverbs chapter 27. Just one verse. Proverbs 27, the very first verse. If you're there already, good. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth.
boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, because you're not promised tomorrow. Neither am I. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You got enough to deal with today. If you've been given today, you are to redeem the time, for the days are evil. You're not promised tomorrow. And how many, I, take that for granted. I'm telling you, when you have a run-in with death, it changes you. Because even though you're of the church of the living God and you know where you're going to go when you're going to die, the fact like, wow, wow, I could have died. Who would who'd, who'd be here to take care of my wife? Wow. We know this. But when you actually go through it, it's different. And see, there are those of you who call yourselves Christians, and you've you've got five years tops. If that, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 17. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Of course, James chapter 4, we had to come here, of course. Of course, James chapter 4. Under the law, or under the law, current dispensation. And James, of course, is written for the time of Jacob's trouble as well. Okay, it's written on to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Okay. James chapter 4. Come on. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Think about that verse. What is good? There is none good but one. Who is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You've heard the true gospel, and you're rejecting? You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. If you were to die, you'd go straight to hell. 
you know, well, one of these days I ought to go get saved. You still love this, though, don't you? You're messing around with something that you ought not to. And your life, whether you like to admit this or not, is in the hand of God. You could have a heart attack at any moment. An aneurysm. An embolism. What if you're walking on down the street and a car, you know, people uh, uh, getting the steel of the Jesuit poignard, passing out uh, at the wheel, can, you know, <laughs> you, you never know. You never know. Finally, Second Peter, chapter 3. One verse. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? For it is certain that we brought we for certain we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we may take nothing out. Naked came I hither, uh, naked came I hither, uh, naked came I hither out of the worm, out of the womb, and that, instead, you know what, instead of butchering that, <laughs> so beg your pardon, I beg your pardon, go to Job, go to Job, Job chapter 1, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Job chapter 1. Verses 20 on to verse 22. After Job lost everything. His family. His house. His wealth. Everything. Job chapter 1 verses 20 on to verse 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Therefore, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. <laughs> you and I, Church of the Living God, we ought not to fear death because we know where we are going. Absolutely. But see, you have to be aware that at any time it could happen, your death. You could be in the most perfect health, and God could suddenly, for whatever his reasons are, time's up. And if you're going to frustrate the grace of God by going and receiving the steel of the Jesuit poniard or messing around with sin, you're of the church of the living God and get caught literally maybe with your pants down? Oh my. You know, I, I really do hope and pray that <clears throat> there are those of you who are on the fence, who are messing around, who are taking these things lightly, that you'll just 
wake up. Because what if you don't have tomorrow? What if you don't? I know where I'm going. You? Do you know? Are you sure? I hope so. Please consider these things. Because life is too short. Life is way too short. And I'll be honest, I would love to see my even my dearest, dearest friend from England in heaven. I would. I do not at all believe that's going to happen, but it would be nice. I'd like to see you there with me. I'd like to see you there with us. But you, you know, you've just got to get over yourself, dear friend. And you can use all your trick questions and all your tomfoolery. Got to get over yourself, man. That's going to be it for this video. This is way past my bedtime. Um, it is nighttime right now. I am not going to upload this video tonight. I am going to lay down, get to prayer, get to prayer and get to sleep. And then first thing in the morning, I'm going to upload this video. I'm not going to do this tonight. So when this is uploaded and you see like it's, you know, that's why. Okay. I recorded this on the 5th. I'm going to upload it on the 6th, so you know, okay? And if, I, if I'm not doing it, then my wife will. So. <laughs> because, like I said, I don't know if I got tomorrow. I hope I do. There's still a lot that can, the Lord can, you know, that the Lord can do. Um, not just through me, but there's a lot to be done. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need us. But we as his body. We ought to be out there. Here, doing whatever. So. Brethren, pray for one another. Don't forget your brethren in um, Australia. Pray for the babes in Christ. Pray for each other. Pray for God's mercy. Love you. See you in the next video. Hopefully. Bye-bye.